Hi, welcome back to Carbohydrates in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the um, most common disaccharides that we're going to encounter, and that's sucrose, as shown right here. Okay, this is the structure of sucrose. And what I'm going to do before we go into a little bit about it is we're going to talk about if you were asked to draw this on an exam, we're going to go over the structural um, properties of this and how you would go about thinking about it. Okay, so to start off with, sucrose is a disaccharide and it's composed of condensation between two monosaccharides. Those monosaccharides are this one right here, which is glucose, and this one over here, which is fructose. And you condense these two sugars and you get sucrose. Now, glucose, I'm just going to draw in the typical um, Hayworth projection that you typically see over here. Fructose connects to it in a very strange way. Okay, This right here is the typical structure of fructose that we normally draw. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and label these atoms right here, and you'll see why I do that in just a minute. So this is, let me get back to my pen, this is one, actually let me do this. Let's say, let's just number the atoms in the ring. Let's say this is one, two, three, and four, okay? Um, now, one of the things I'm just gonna tell you is this is not the normal numbering of the ring, but there's a reason I'm going to do this, okay? I'm also gonna do this. I'm gonna label this OH, in pink, okay? Now this is sort of the way I want you to think about it. This five-membered ring, okay, technically it's in an envelope conformation, but imagine just, imagine it's it's not your typical geometry, it's sort of like a coin like this, okay? A coin laying on a table, basically. This hydroxyl group right here, off of that coin, or off of this flat ring, if it was flat, is going up. So the reason I've drawn this in pink is because that's what this arrow is right here. It's going up, okay? So this right here is essentially this hydroxyl group, okay, right there, okay? Now what I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to, and actually this arrow right here, I'm going to go ahead and draw this off of position four. I'm going to imagine taking this fructose molecule and I'm basically going to flip it over. So if I'm imagining that this ring in the fructose is the coin, the top is going to be the heads, the bottom is the tails. If I just imagine flipping it over, okay, so I have an axis that goes right through the coin, I flip it over so now the heads are down here and the tails are up here. It's just like flipping a coin. If the coin is initially on the table with heads up, I'm just going to flip that coin right over. Then this OH that was initially going up, it's going to go over, and now it's going to be pointing, oops, it's going to be pointing down like this. Okay, and therefore you see this OH, which was represented by the arrow, the pink arrow, now goes down. And just for um, getting our directions straight, if this arrow was over here pointing to the left, when I flip it over, it should now be over here pointing to the right, and it is, okay? One of the things that's really important to be able to do is to be able to take molecules and flip them and then put the groups in the right place. So this OH right here, this pink OH, if I flip it and now it's down, then whatever was down here off of this carbon right here, this hydroxymethyl group, now goes up. Okay, and hopefully that's what you see. Okay, let me go ahead and make that perfectly clear. This CH2OH goes down here. Now when I flip it, it's on the other side going up. Okay, another example, let me put this in light blue. This OH, or this CH2OH, that's going up on the left side, if I flip it, now it's going to be going down on the right side. Okay, and you can continue, and you can flip it as many times as you want. Um, these two OH groups are actually going to be just like this, um, in this in the structure down here, okay? Why do I do that? Well, the reason I'm going to do that is because fructose, when you draw it connected to glucose in, in, in this form of sucrose that we see down here, essentially the way to think about it is this hydroxyl right here in pink is going to attack this carbon right here. That's the anomeric carbon of glucose. So it's specifically going to attack this carbon 
and you can think of that OH group as just going away. Okay, that's not really how it happens, but you can think about it like that. So that means this oxygen right here, this oxygen, I'm going to draw this in orange, this oxygen atom, that's this oxygen atom right here in sucrose. And it's attacking glucose's anomeric carbon from the bottom. So this green arrow, this mechanistic arrow, is essentially becoming a bond. That's this bond. It's attacking it from the bottom, right? The bond to, from the O, this oxygen, the orange oxygen to the fructose, put that maybe in purple, that's this bond right there, that's also still going down. And so in doing this, we've essentially made a glycosidic linkage between glucose and fructose. And this is your structure of, fruct of sucrose, okay? It's just a little bit of the basics on how to draw it. Now, glucose and fructose make sucrose when they're condensed, but they only f connect in one specific way. And this is how you write it. Glucose alpha 1 to 2 beta fructose. Okay, what does that mean? All right. What that essentially means is that for glucose, the anomeric carbon, which, and the reason I know it's the anomeric is because we're referring to position one, which is defined for glucose as the anomeric, it has to be in the alpha configuration. So what does that mean? It means that the oxygen that comes off of glucose, meaning this orange oxygen right here, has to be going in the opposite direction as this hydroxymethyl group, okay? This hydroxymethyl group is going up, this oxygen is now going down, and so we say that glucose is anomeric carbon, or carbon one in this case, is in the alpha configuration. Now for fructose, it's position two, let me do it like this, position two is in the beta configuration. Now how do we figure that out? Well for that, again what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this hydroxymethyl group right there, box it in red, and we would say that this OH right here, this hydroxyl circled in pink, is going in the same direction as the, the CH2OH on the, on the last carbon right here, okay? Because they're going in the same direction, it's beta. Now, if we turn it upside down, it's still beta, okay? So the CH2OH that we're looking at to compare it to is this one, and we see that that oxygen is going in the same direction, and so it has to be beta. Now, in terms of the numbering of it, okay, I'm going to number each of these atoms in each one. For glucose, this is one, two, three. Now, these are the actual numberings, the correct numberings, five and six for the carbons. For fructose, this is position one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, they're both hexoses. So, because position two is the one that's in the glycosidic linkage, we say this is carbon two, and it has to be in the beta configuration. Okay, it has to be in the beta, and since it's going in the same direction as this CH2OH right here, it's beta. But from glucose's perspective, it, this oxygen is going down, whereas this CH2OH is going up, so that one would be alpha. All right, and this is your structure of sucrose. Now, sucrose is a very common dietary disaccharide and you can get it from a lot of sources. Um, in the old world, um, you know, when we're talking about, say, prior to probably the, the, uh, the 20th century, so a long time ago, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, usually the place that people got sucrose or table sugar was, um, there was sugar trade, but also um, there's a lot of foods that naturally have sucrose in them. Um, however, in today's society, sugar is added to everything. Um, there's a lot of drinks. Um, sports drinks have sucrose in them. Gatorade's an example of that. Um, usually most sodas don't have it because they're either diet sodas and they're sweetened with aspartame, or they have something called high fructose corn syrup, which we'll talk about in another video. But sucrose is usually added to a lot of drinks. It's also added to a lot of foods. And so in today's society, if you go to the store, it's very, it's almost difficult to avoid getting sucrose. And sucrose is considered, and in, through research and studies, to be the main cause of pretty much every Western disease that we know of. 
that's going to be type 2 diabetes, heart disease, um, anything you can think of like that. In fact, um, one interesting thing is you can actually have morbid obesity, but if you have if you don't consume any sugar or negligible sugar, you actually won't have type 2 diabetes. It's actually not possible. Type 2 diabetes is a disease caused by eating too much sugar. That's why you can have somebody who's very, very, very thin, but if they eat a lot of sugar, they can actually have type 2 diabetes. It's not necessarily something you get when you're morbidly obese. Um, heart disease has been shown to be caused by sugar as well. Okay, so just because it's it's there, just because you have um, glucose in the blood doesn't mean you should eat a lot of sucrose. The sugar in your blood is not sucrose. It's glucose. In any case, if you get sucrose in the diet, it goes down your uh, digestive tract through to the stomach. Nothing really happens to it in the stomach. It's not until it gets into the small intestine where in the uh, duodenum, the brush border, which is the microvilli in the small intestine, they have enzymes referred to as sucrase. Sucrase is a hydrolytic enzyme that ultimately splits apart this disaccharide. You could sort of think of it splitting right down there. And it liberates free glucose and free fructose, both of which get absorbed, go to the liver, and various things happen to them. Um, the ultimate end goal, if you're eating, is that the glucose and fructose both get broken down to make energy. So you can get things like NADH, FADH2, and ultimately our end goal is obviously ATP. Okay, So the main point of sucrose is that it is a dietary source of ATP. However, just because you can get ATP out of it doesn't mean you should have a lot of it. Like I said, it's sucrose itself is, the, is a major cause of Western disease. And the sugar in your blood is not sucrose, it's glucose. Okay, There's a difference between dietary sugar and blood sugar. There's a big difference between the two. Okay, So it's a very common misconception. Most people don't think about that. Um, you can get your, you, you can and should get most of your energy from other sources. Um, so things like lipids, amino acids, and uh, complex carbohydrates, not sucrose. Okay, so that's a little bit of detail about sucrose. Uh, join us in the next vi videos where we go over some more disaccharides, and then we're going to get into some polysaccharides. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like it and subscribe for future videos and notifications. Thank you.